Right, the results are in if you're just waking up. Uh, we can now tell you that Somerton and uh, Froome, the by-election result there, the Lib Dems took that. Uh, the share, the change, uh, up 28 points there. Uh, for Selby and Ainsty, Labour's Kim Mather took that, uh, going up 21 points to get 46% of the vote share. He's only 25 years old. That is a big problem for the Conservative Party, of course, losing that part of the red wall very important for the Conservatives. Uh, they dropped down at uh, 25 points. Actually, looking back at Somerton and Froome, they dropped, uh, the Conservatives dropped down 29 points. So there is something of a recurring theme going on. Uh, the, the surprising one this morning when I woke up, Uxbridge and South Ryslip by election. The Conservatives narrowly held on with 45%. They were down 7 points, 7.4 points. But... And it is a big but. Ulez played a very big part in this. I have no doubt about that in terms of Sadiq Khan expanding this out to the M25. Many of you getting in touch this morning saying, uh, no, is it any wonder? In fact, Barry says, is it any wonder that Labour failed to win Uxbridge? People don't want Ulez. And they also sent out Emily Thornbury and Eddie Izzard out to campaign, a guaranteed Labour loss as a result. Uh, let's uh, try and shed some more light on this now. Joining me now, Lord Hayward, Conservative peer and polling expert. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, so, so really good to talk to you um, again. Just in terms of where we are, many people predicted that actually the Conservative Party may lose all three. What are your thoughts? You're an expert in this. You, you know a great deal about polling. We know this is a by-election, so you can't necessarily extrapolate the results uh, across the whole country. But I think this is pretty sombre reading for the Conservatives. Oh, there's no question that both Somerton and Selby are bad results for the Conservative Party. Uh, the problem for the Labour Party is that they had actually been quite openly talking about taking both Selby and Uxbridge. Not only had the Conservatives lowered expectations, but the Labour Party had built up expectations. And therefore, as you just said, the issue of ULES uh, is quite striking. Um, there's no question it cost the Labour Party the victory in Uxbridge uh, and a lot of people will turn on Sadiq Khan as a result of it. Mm. And, and in terms of that, you, you make a really good point. Just, just let's st stay with the Conservatives for the moment. So, so Rishi Sunak now, he, he, this must be very sombre reading. They're in serious trouble. If they're dropping down 29, 25 points, it, let's, let's take Uxbridge out of this. We haven't got long until a general election. Clearly the voters are sending a very strong message to Rishi Sunak. Is he listening or is he tone deaf? I think uh, he will actually... He's got the message, there's no question about that, uh, and the position in the opinion polls, the local government election results, have been sending very clear messages to the government. They failed up to very recently on the question of the economy and inflation. He breathed a great sigh of relief yesterday, so he will have to look at it in the context of very poor results, but with an improving position in relation to inflation. Um, so it's it's a mixed bag for him, but it's a, an ongoing problem in terms of huge swings in two seats. And, and as you know, Rishi Sunak has these five promises. You mentioned inflation there going down to 7.9% is written behind him. I mean, many people are saying it's actually despite the government's intervention that it's going down. This is cost push inflation. Also, the small boats, he will be very pleased the illegal migration bill went through. Do you think it's enough, though, to convince people to return to the Conservative Party? Many people actually getting in touch saying the way to win is for the Conservative Party to be Conservative. I think... Uh... There's no question about it. The top of the opinion polls is the economy and inflation by quite a long way. Once you go down to the next step of issues, whether it's immigration or the NHS or whatever, then you see a party divide on that map, on those subjects. Um, but cost of living comes out clearly top. And you can say that the government can't influence inflation, and that's absolutely right, but it can in some ways. Uh, and there's no question, the largest single group of people in all opinion polls that have yet to make their minds up are Conservatives who voted in 2019, who have yet to decide how they're going to vote in 2024. Uh, the indications are that people may go in a series of different directions, but I think most pollers, pollsters expect that the majority of those people will come back to the Conservative Party. But the question is, will it be enough? In terms of policies, um, the vast 
all the indications are that the vast majority of people do not want what one might describe as harsh, obsessive, conservative, uh, right-wing uh, policies that, despite the fact that they have a very strong voice, the blue wall areas are, were turned off the Tory party because of that sort of message. Uh, and actually, there are many, many MPs who know that that's the position and they need to get back the middle class women aged 40 to 50 who've defected away from the Tory party in recent years. Let's talk about Labour now. In terms of the Labour Party, obviously uh, they did not win Somerton and Froome. Uh, in terms of Selby and Ainsley, they did take that. That is a good result, but it's the red wall. Also, this young man, he's very, very young indeed. I just wonder, this morning, if I was Keir Starmer, I wouldn't be very confident. No, I think that's right. And I think the problems of uh, at Summerton and Froome, by elections, normally the voters go for the part candidate most likely to defeat the government. Um, and I speak as somebody who holds the record for the largest anti-government swing of all time <laughs> in Christchurch 30 years ago. So uh, the results in Somerton and Froome, poor Labour, that's not a surprise. There's no problem. The problem for Labour is Uxbridge because it's not just a London result. There's a whole series of seats which Labour has its eyes on. Stevenage, Thurrock, Harlow, Dartford, Gravesend. Those are councils where in May the Tories did less badly and it was ULIS driven. So it's not just a London result. There are implications for seats just outside London as well. Uh, and they will, the Labour Party will be having a real review of that this morning. Moving on to the Lib Dems, obviously they are very gleeful about their results in Somerton and Froome. Rightly. But, and rightly so, yes, indeed. Now, in terms of uh, their electoral prospects going forward, we were talking about this earlier, does it mean the Lib Dems are on the march? Or again, is this about being a by-election and voting for the party that you think will defeat the incumbent? It's a combination of both. It's by-election success, mid-term, uh, but no doubt about it, a very big swing to the Liberal Democrats. But it, they are the groups of people that the Conservatives turned off um, that the Conservatives under Rishi Sunak are now more likely to be able to pull back. Uh, the downturn in the polls for the Conservatives in the last few weeks has been driven by the people that they were actually getting back who one might, as I described just now, are essentially middle class women, higher educated, higher income uh, in the home counties and other middle class areas like Warwickshire, Cheshire, Harrogate and the like. So, so just uh, in, ter in terms of that, obviously MPs have scuttled off for their uh, recess. Uh, will there be a reshuffle now or will he wait? Will he sort of sit there? Will Rishi Sunak sit there and wait and then decide what to do over the summer? I'm just going to make a, a slightly personal point on behalf of the peers, and that is that the peers have not... Indeed, to indeed. ...used your expression. We're still sitting <laughs> and will be for two days I, next I, week. I, Rob, I did say MPs. You are correct. And the I upper did, house is still you there. You did, and I appreciate that. <laughs> um, it's very difficult because, as you say, the MPs have gone. But as one senior Tory MP said to me yesterday, um, they'll make themselves available if the Prime Minister makes a phone call today or tomorrow or Monday. Uh, and I think reshuffles are better done before September because a min ministers need to get settled into whatever role they've got mm. to throw them in in early September when Parliament comes back uh, with new bills or whatever it may happen to be, really is not good management. And looking at it from a, a business management point of view, now is the better time to do a reshuffle. But it is difficult given that we're in a recess. Uh, Rob, very quickly, if I may, just ask you about this Coots story. The fact is Nigel Farage uh, had this subject access freedom request. Obviously, he's now had an apology from, uh, from the parent company, from RBS, as a result. I mean, it strikes me that this is a very dangerous precedent. I also was involved they wanted to know was I a politically exposed person I'm deeply nervous if peers like yourself 
Scotland and their descendants are not allowed bank accounts because they're seen to be politically exposed. Are you concerned about the freedom of expression in this country? I am, and I'm concerned not solely for peers, but not solely for high-profile people. Um, I, I share an office with a colleague of mine who was actually refused a bank account because he was a Conservative peer. Um, we were discussing it yesterday. It's, it's utterly unacceptable um, that banks can take such decisions. I don't know the detail precisely in relation to Nigel Farage, so I'm commenting in broad principle rather than specifically in relation to the Farage case. Banks uh, need to review the practices which appear to have been hidden under the counter, but not that hidden in some cases. As I say, I was talking to a colleague yesterday who'd faced the same problem. Mm. Uh, very good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. That's Lord Hayward, Conservative peer and uh, polling expert.